When you begin a research assignment, the first thing to do is decide on your research topic. It should be something that's directly relevant to the subject matter of your course. The next thing to do is find out how your topic fits in with other topics and into the larger scheme of the discipline. Use reference books or ebooks, and even Wikipedia and similar sites. Skim over articles related to your topic. Follow the links to other articles and learn about how it connects with other questions and issues. Now it's time to get your research topic to just the right balance between broad and narrow, general and specific. It needs to be general enough that you can find enough information sources on it. You also don't want to write a paper that goes in a dozen different directions, so your topic needs to be specific enough that you won't be overwhelmed by thousands of search results and too much to write about. Usually, people's topics start out too general, like diversity, child development, solar power, or the American Revolution. You'll never have time to research and write about such a broad topic. When it comes to topics that are too specific, it really depends on what subject area you're studying. Some subjects are relatively new and have a lot that's unknown and unexplored. In those subjects, your narrowed topic might not seem all that narrow. Other subjects are well established, and scholars have covered increasingly specialized niches within the field. In those subjects, your narrowed topic may seem almost ridiculously specific. It also matters how strong your library's collection is in the subject area that you're working in. You need to be able to get a sufficient number of research materials from a diversity of authors and journals. What I want to do now is use the Academic Search Complete database to give you an idea of how you move from a general, general research topic to a specific one. We often refer to this as narrowing down. First, let's start by searching a really big topic, George Washington. I type it into the search box and put it in quotation marks because that's how you tell databases that two words belong together as a phrase. Then I hit enter or click search. So here's my search results list and it says I have 20,219 search results. That's way too many information sources to scan through and it also means there's way too much to write about in one paper. It's military service, political career, personality and beliefs, and the impact you made on the country. So instead of looking at everything about George Washington, let's look at a particular subtopic. You can get an idea of what subtopics are available within your larger topic from what you've learned in the course and from background research you did in order to decide on your topic to begin with. The way you narrow down your topic is to add one or more additional related topics and look at where they overlap. When you take the topic George Washington and add the topic military career, you get the subtopic, George Washington's military career. George Washington, in quotes, is still up here in the search box, so I'm going to add the word and, and then military career, also in quotes, because it's another phrase. The word and is actually a Boolean operator, which tells the database that I want both of these things in my search results. Then I click search, or hit enter. So here's the search results list, and there are far fewer information sources now, only three. Does it seem likely that there are only three articles about George Washington's military career in a huge database like Academic Search Complete? It doesn't to me. That tells me I probably need to come up with better keywords for this topic. Here I go. I'm going to put an open parenthesis in front of military career. And after it, I'm going to put an OR. Parentheses around all these keywords joined by ORs will tell the database that you want search results that have any or all of these keywords in them. Parentheses, quote, military career, unquote, or general, or, quote, American Revolution, unquote, or, quote, Revolutionary War, unquote, or, quote, War for Independence, unquote, or, quote, French and Indian War, unquote, or colonel, close parentheses. As you can see, sometimes it is helpful to know a little bit about your topic before you start researching. That lets you know what kinds of keywords you might want to search. That is why it's always best to start by looking in your textbooks and course materials, and also in reference books and ebooks about your topic. Once you have typed all your keywords in there, hit enter or click search. Parentheses around all these keywords joined by ORs will tell the database that you want search results that have any or all of these keywords in them. Parentheses, quote, military career, unquote, or general, or, quote, American Revolution, unquote, 
or, quote, revolutionary war, unquote, or, quote, war for independence, unquote, or, quote, French and Indian war, unquote, or colonel, close parentheses. As you can see, sometimes it is helpful to know a little bit about your topic before you start researching. That lets you know what kinds of keywords you might want to search. That is why it's always best to start by looking in your textbooks and course materials, and also in reference books and ebooks about your topic. Once you've typed all your keywords in there, hit enter or click search. Now I have 1,831 search results. That's more like what I'd expect a big database to have about as big a topic as this. But it's too many articles to scan through all their titles, and definitely too much material to write about in an ordinary research paper. I need to narrow it down further. Here's where the concept gets a little tricky. I said before that you should narrow your topic by adding a concept, which is exactly what I just did by adding all those keywords that are synonyms and related terms for military service. But now I'm going to narrow it some more by deleting General, American Revolution, Revolutionary War, War for Independence, and all of the ORs between those keywords. I just want the French and Indian War keywords. So I delete all those keywords I didn't want, and then I hit Enter or click Search. Now I have 43 search results, which is a great number as long as most of them are scholarly, relevant, and available in full text. But what if I had wanted to narrow it down another way by adding yet another topic? I can still do that. Let's go back to the search with all the Revolutionary War keywords, as well as the French and Indian War keywords. After that set of parentheses, I'm adding another AND, and another open parentheses, strategy, or tactics, close parentheses. Hit enter or click search. That gives me 127 search results. Again, this is a good number that's enough to research, but not too much to deal with. But here's a caveat about that number. You got 127 articles, but you didn't necessarily get 127 usable articles. Some might not be scholarly, some might be a little off topic, some might not be available in full text. And then, well, I'm demonstrating this topic in Academic Search Complete, which is a huge database covering all topics. Sometimes you'll get some completely irrelevant articles, like this fourth one titled An Optimal Free Energy Dissipation Strategy of the Min CDE Oscillator in Regulating Symmetric Bacterial Cell Division. I have no idea how those keywords brought that article up. Maybe one of the authors worked at George Washington University, and the title does have the word strategy. Anyway, the point I want to make is that you should never constrain your search to just these big multiple, multidisciplinary databases. Use the subject-specific ones, too. You'll find them in the subject guides, or you can ask a librarian. Anyway, once you've got your topic narrowed, your search results list in a big database like Academic Search Complete, or a smaller but more subject-specific database like America History and Life, should be somewhere between 50 and 500. Not too many to skim over all the titles and see what the articles are about, but enough that you have plenty of information and perspectives to work with. Also remember that if you have many articles in your search results list, you may have to navigate through multiple pages of search results. In this database, the page links are at the bottom of the results list. If you're using a screen reader, the fastest way to scan the titles of the articles is using the headings list. But the links list is better if you want to be able to go directly to the article information or save an article to your folder. So to make a long story short, with a search narrowed so that I get between a few dozen and a few hundred search results, even if a lot of the search results are useless or unavailable, I should still have plenty of sources to use in my paper.